how many of you, this is your very first time with us? Raise your hand. Awesome, everybody give them a warm welcome. We are so glad you're here. We know God's got something awesome, awesome for you. Um, so how Flourish works is you you probably got a bookmark on your way in. If you didn't, they're going to be on that table right outside the door. On that bookmark, our special speaker um, is listed and um, our meal theme. So everybody brings a dish. Um, it's a, like a Pollock style according to the meal theme. Or if you're running late, um, grab a package of cookies or a side salad. Um, that's totally fine too. And then we just ask that you get here a couple minutes early. So our awesome Flourish Kitchen ladies can get that food on the table. So grab one of those bookmarks. The new one is out for April and May. It's our very last one. Can you believe it? I know. We only have five more um, left. So next week um, is spring break, though. So I wanted to make sure everybody knew that. Next week is spring break, so we will not be meeting. So go and enjoy yourselves or get together with each other. Um, go do something if you don't have anything else going on. Go to a coffee shop or go to lunch. Um, and that will be an awesome way to keep up the connection. Um, also, um, if you don't know, we do offer free child care for ages 10 and under. We just ask that you get on our email list. And that email is awesome. It goes out weekly. It has an encouragement for, from Pastor Barbara. Also, it tells you all the things going on here at Karis Christian Center. There's always something happening. And then also, it has the, the link in it for you to RSVP for our child care. So we love for you to RSVP so we can make sure that we have enough resources and people to take care of your awesome kiddos. Um, let's see. Oh, and then when, so when we come back in two weeks, um, you'll want to bring a friend and come back to hear Pastor Barbara speak. And then our meal theme is Asian foods. And then also I wanted to tell you about, am I right about that? Asian Okay, good. Glad I didn't get that wrong. Um, and then also I wanted to tell you about, we are doing, um, how many of you know Gospel Homes for Women? It is a ministry here in Colorado Springs that we actually support. And um, it's just a ministry that that uh, ministers to women coming out of prison. And so we do a donation drive for them um, almost every single year. And so we're doing one on April 11th. You should have gotten a flyer for that as you came in. It's got a list of supplies on it that they actually specifically need right now. Now. So you'll want to, um, so you have two, two weeks, right? Is that two weeks or three weeks from now? So three weeks from now, you want to bring your donation on that day only. We can't, um, we can't accept it any other time except for that date. And, um, and then we'll have a place for you to drop it off. But that, it, we always wow them. So let's do that again, okay? Um, it's going to be an awesome time. Um, how many of you had birthdays this week? Or actually the last two weeks since we were out last week for snow day. Anyone have a birthday the last two weeks? Raise your hand. No birthdays. Wow. Okay. Well, just so you know, if it is your birthday, we always give out um, gifts for that. So, um, be <laughs> Pastor Lynn, you can have a birthday gift. You can have one. Um, and then if you would like to give today, we always love to encourage you to give. All of the offering will go towards our special speaker, which we have a really good one today. How many of you excited about Pastor Lynn? Um, so all of our offering will go towards, go straight to them to support them. And then also it just takes care of flourish needs that we have as well. So if you'd like to give today, we'd love to encourage you to do that. The offering envelopes are on your table. So make your checks payable to Cares Christian Center or CCC. Um, you can pay with cash or credit card. That's fine too. Um, there's, they are on the table. And then on your way out the door today, you can drop them in that offering station right by the door inside the slot for us. Okay. And then it will go towards supporting um, the Crow ministry. So, um, okay. And then if you can pull out your phones and silence them for us so there's no distractions. And then also share the live stream. We do live stream this. It starts at 12. So if you want to share this, this could be just the thing that somebody needs to set them free. Amen. All right. Everybody give Pastor Barbara a warm welcome as she comes up. Hey, again, I just want to welcome everyone. I'm so glad you came for our very special Flurry's Easter brunch. What an awesome time to get together and celebrate that we serve a living God who cares about us. Amen. We just want to welcome everyone online connected right now. You are in for a special treat. 
if everyone could give a super duper warm welcome for our missionary and dear friend Lynn Crow as she comes up here. Lynn, we are so excited that you're here, and for some of them that maybe weren't able to be here last night, you and Bobby have been serving as missionaries for 47 or plus years. We've, we've been there, both Pastor and myself have been there, and just seen how they have really impacted a very large area. It's just, you're such a blessing, and thank you for sharing your time. I know you have been in a whirlwind trip this week. And she will be here um, a little bit. You know, we do have child care to one, but I just want everyone to help us out. Lynn does need to leave by one to catch a plane. So um, we all want to make sure that we get a chance to talk to you, but then help you catch your plane. Thank you. So anyway, we love you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. What a blessing for uh, me to come here every year that I get this opportunity. It's like a highlight of my year. I start talking to all the women in our church about me coming and, and being able to impart whatever God has put on my heart for you at that time. And it's just a real highlight. I, I really appreciate Pastor Barbara and Pastor Heather also opening up their doors for this opportunity for me to be here. And we love them and we love the, the Purdue so much and uh, they're a great blessing. And we do want you to know uh, if you were there last night or heard it online that your church supports us monthly and has for many years and so you uh, all of you are sowing seed because if you're giving towards missions or towards the church and then a percentage goes to missions from Karis and so you are supporting us and so everything that every time I start thinking about all the things that our church is doing to win souls to see people healed to see see people set free, um, you're part of that. That goes into your heavenly account. So that's really awesome. You know, a lot of times we're giving, we're giving, and maybe we're not thinking about the extension that those offerings go, how far they go, and how much it's accomplishing so that um, we don't realize all of the um, the miracles, all of the people that are getting saved. And um, I know I had my conference. I have a, um, an annual conference in November and women come from all across uh, Mexico to attend it. And usually we run between nine and a thousand at that conference. And one of the women um, on the day that we were getting ready to close, she was so excited about everything that happened at the, at the uh, conference that she decided, I'm going to take a, a bus home. I mean, she lived in our city. <laughs> but she said, instead of getting a taxi, she didn't have a car. She said, I'm going to just get on the bus. And she asked the bus driver, would it be all right with you if I tell the people here on the bus about Jesus? And he said, yeah, go ahead. And so she stood up at the front of the bus. It was loaded. And she was able to tell all these people. Then she said, I believe in healing. Can I pray for you? So she went through the bus and prayed for everybody because she got so stirred up from the conference. But see, you don't hear these things that goes into your account. All of this that's happening at our church and in the ministry all over the world, it goes into your account. So you're having um, all these wonderful uh, people in your account that have been saved, healed, set free, and uh, serving God, serving God. So I really thank you, and I thank Pastor Barbara and Heather and the men for giving it, Bobby and I an opportunity. I wanted to share with you today, um, I really prayed about what the Lord would have me to share, and I really had him put it on my heart in his presence, in his presence. You know, every one of us, it's so special when we get into his presence. Now, we know that the Father is with us all the time. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. So we are in his presence. But there are times that things happen in our life that we feel um, 
a presence of God that maybe we didn't feel the hour before or the day before. And it's these special touches that God does for us just to encourage us, to just to lift us up and just to let us know how much he loves us. They are so important, these special touches from God that we get all the time. Y'all have to excuse, every time I come up here, my voice changes. <laughs> and I go home and I think, why didn't you stay the same in <laughs> And, and change up here. I sound real scratchy, but I'm okay. But anyway, um, but these are special moments that God does something supernatural for us. Now, um, getting into the, entering into the presence of God, but for us to get into those special places, um, a special or like a secret place is not a location it's a condition of the heart. You know, people say, okay, I go into my prayer closet and that's great. Or I go into a, I go out to the garden and I, and I pray and, you know, seek the Lord and that's awesome. But most of the time, the secret place of God is the condition of the heart because we can go anywhere. We can go into our car and we can just have God minister to us in the car while we're driving. We can go into our bedroom. Uh, I do a, a lot of cooking, and so I'm always in the kitchen. I have two sons, and so I didn't have girl help at all in the kitchen. And so I always put on praise and worship, and I'm in there just cooking and having the best time. And there has been times in praise and worship in the kitchen that the power of God would fall in my kitchen to where I had to turn off the stove and lay on the floor because of the presence of God, because I, I started to worship him and praise him. I want to share with you um, right now three different areas to position ourselves to help us to get in his presence closer than what we normally do. And these aren't, uh, these three things are things you're already doing. This isn't something new. This is what you're already doing. But it is things where we put a draw on God. We put a draw on God. Okay, the first one is in prayer, in prayer. And I want to read over to Hebrews 4, 16. Let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we might um, obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of trouble. Anytime we come into the presence of God with prayer, whether it's a prayer petition that we have that we're asking God to help us with something or whether it's a prayer of thanksgiving that we're coming in just to thank God for everything that he's done in our life or whether it's a prayer of thanksgiving, whether it's a prayer of uh, concern, like, like not knowing what the answers are, what we're facing, we don't understand. But every time we come into the presence of God in prayer, we're coming into the throne room of God. We're coming into the throne room of grace. Our prayers aren't, sometimes we feel like our prayers are not even getting higher than the ceiling but that's not what the word tells us. He says, when you pray, you are coming into the throne room of God. And so, of course, we're coming in where God is, where the King of Kings, where the Lord of Lord is, where he created the universe. And we're coming into his presence and we're his kids. We're his kids. And we're coming with our petition. Just like if you have kids, you allow them to come to you. And you allow them to bring whatever it is they need or whatever it is they're looking for or whatever it is they want to say to us. We allow them to come and we sit with them. We talk to them. We pray with them. We listen to what they have to say. And it's the same way with the Lord. When we come into his presence, we are coming into the throne room of grace. And the throne room door is always open. The throne room door. If we can see ourselves that we are coming into the presence of God and that we are presenting our petitions or we're giving thanks or we're giving praise, whatever it is we're doing at that moment, but that he's listening, he's paying attention to us and then his miracles start. When we give the petition, then he's already starting to work 
work on that petition. Even if it doesn't come quickly, that doesn't mean he hasn't already started giving the answer behind the scene, moving things, moving things around to get you the answer. And that it will come. It will come to you. <clears throat> I want to give you a testimony. Oh, let me give you this verse too. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me and I will answer you. And I will tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. So when we come to him in prayer, we can call on him. Sometimes the call is desperate. Sometimes the call is just, Lord, I need your help. And, but we can call on him and he will answer us. It says here, he will answer us. And he'll show us things that we don't even know. <coughs> Excuse me. And so this is so important. I wanted to share you a testimony. Uh, uh, we have a balcony on our house. It's a two-story house. <coughs> I'm, I'm going to have to ask if anybody has a throat lozenger. <coughs> I apologize for this, but the more I'm talking, it's getting... <coughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm just going to slip this in my mouth. Um, but so I, uh, I have a, a balcony. <laughs> have a balcony that goes around the house and uh, goes around. So I get out there and pray on the balcony because it goes all around. And so I walk and so I pray and, and, it, and it's a lot of fun. I've had so many awesome things happen while I've been out there. And um and just spend time with the Lord. And of course, it's outside. So I'm seeing the trees. I'm hearing the birds. It's really special. Every time that I get out there, sometimes it's late at night. So I don't see much other than uh, shadows or lights from the distance or something. But the other, night, uh, the other day, during the, uh, it was early evening, and I was praying. And so I was walking around. I was praying. And I turned a corner of the house. And God hit me with joy. I wasn't praying about joy. <laughs> I didn't know joy was coming. <laughs> I mean, I was just praying about petitions and different things. And he hit me literally with joy. I turned that corner and I went into hysterics <laughs> laughing. And I'm thinking in my mind, uh, well, what just happened? <laughs> I mean, I'm just praying and everything. And then I go into hysterics. But all this joy was just bubbling up from inside. And so I yielded to it. Yes. And then I stayed in that. I kept walking and laughing. And then all that time that that was happening, I was feeling this refreshing. I was feeling this refreshing. And, and I continued praying after a while. But I stayed in that joy for so long because it was just something supernatural that God did for me. I, I, later I thought, I wonder if the father and their son were up there and say, let's see what happens if we hit Lynn with joy. <laughs> let's just have fun. Let's have fun. You know, God is fun. If you think God is only serious and he's only condemning you or he's only trying to get you to walk the straight and narrow, I'm telling you what, he is fun. He's a fun God. You need to see him that way. He's a fun God. And so that day, and it just stayed with me for so long that he blessed me with that. That was one of those secret moments. That was one of those times that, that he did something special for me. And I'm not any more special than you are sitting out there. But he chose at that moment to just let me experience extra joy and be able to, to walk in that and to enjoy it and to be blessed by that. Another thing that happened is, and I don't know if I told this at one point in the past, but as I was praying one time over finances for the church and finances for Bobby and I, and so we were, I was in a bedroom this time where it's a guest bedroom, but I go in there a lot to pray and I have cards on different uh, scriptures uh, having to do with finances, for believing God for finances. And so I have all these cards, so I would go there and pray, and I'd pull out the cards. I would quote the scriptures. I would stand on the scriptures. I would declare the scriptures, and then I would minister 
to the Lord and thanking him for supplying all the needs and just reading the scriptures, meditating on them, and then believing God for the finances for the church and for Bobby and I. And so that night, that afternoon, I was out there, I was in there praying, and all of a sudden, out of my spirit came the word supernatural increase. Now, that did not come out of my mind, and it just literally, I spoke it. I just was praying, quoting the scriptures, and then I spoke that supernatural increase. Okay, now, it surprised me, but, but when I said it, there was an anointing on it. I felt the anointing on those words, okay? And so I said it again. And because of that anointing, I said it again. And then I said it again. And then it kept increasing with anointing. So in myself, I decided I'm not coming off of this until the Lord chose me to come off because he's doing something. He's doing something special right now. And so I just kept saying, supernatural increase, supernatural increase. And that went on for like 15 minutes. Now I'm walking this whole time, but the anointing was so strong on that, on that supernatural increase. I want to encourage you when you're reading the word and when you're praying, if you make a statement, whether it's a declaration, it's a scripture that you're declaring, whether it's a prayer phrase and you feel the anointing on that, don't continue. Just stay on that until the Lord shows you to continue. Just keep saying those words over and over because what God was doing is he wanted me to see that through those words that the Spirit gave me that didn't even come out of my mind, but through those words that he was getting ready to do a miracle, but he wanted me to recognize that that came out of my spirit, his declaration for the church and for Bobby and I, that supernatural increase. And so I went 15 minutes and then the, the anointing lifted. So I just went ahead and continued praying. And I didn't think any more about it other than I knew that God had just done something uh, special during that prayer time. And so it, I, it was so in his presence. It was so in his presence. Now, the next morning, uh, a man comes to Bobby as soon as the doors are open at the church. And he said, I was thinking last night that I haven't hardly given the church an offering in a long time. And he gave like, I think it was like $4,000 to the church. And then uh, about 30 minutes later, a man comes to my house. I mean, our house. And and so I saw him, I opened the door and he was a man from our church. And I said, well, Bobby's not here, he's in the office. He said, no, I didn't come for Bobby, I came for you. And I said, okay, so he stepped in and he said, I was praying this morning. And he said, the Lord spoke to me and said, I want you to take your offerings, not the tithes. He said, I want you to take your offerings to Lynn. But he said, I saw your face in a vision. And then the Lord told him, I want you to take your offerings to Lynn. So he came to bring me an offering and it was like $300. Th that man for the next three months, about every two weeks, he would bring me an offering. He'd bring me an offering, supernatural increase. Now that didn't come out of my mind, but it was in the prayer time. And it came out of the spirit of God for me to say that these are special moments that God will do for all of us. We just have to position ourselves to be in a place where we're hearing from him, where we're leaning on him, where we're ministering to him, and where we're listening. We're listening to the spirit of God and what he wants to say to us. Okay, the next thing is... Um, in praise and worship. And I love praise and worship so much. I am I am major. Last night, for those of you that weren't here last night, <laughs> when they started singing that song, Get Up Out of the Grave, <laughs> I had so much fun. <laughs> I'm telling you, I could have I danced all around y'all's auditorium. That was a more fun, get up out of that grave. I'm telling you, <laughs> that was awesome. What an awesome praise and worship team you all have. That is so awesome. And it flows out of their heart. They've got the talent. They've got the ability, but they've got the heart. They've got the heart to worship God, to praise God, 
And that's what you're feeling. You're feeling the presence of God. And then those worship songs that followed where we all just raised our hands and spent time worshiping the Lord. That was so awesome. But anyway, praise and worship. Giving yourself opportunities to hear God, but to praise him and worship him. The scripture I want to give you is Hebrew 13, 15. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Always the fruit of our lips, um, being thankful, uh, praising the Lord. We should never go a day without thanking God. We should never go a day without praising him and worshiping him and ministering to him with that. Just telling him the other day, the Lord spoke to Bobby and he said, how many times when you wake up in the morning, do you tell me you love me? So Bobby got convicted (laughs) right there. So he told the church, all right, now we're all going to start telling God that we love him. We're all going to start. So now we, even in church, when we start, everybody starts saying, Father, we love you. We love you. They make it personal. It's not that Bobby loves you or Lynn loves you, but I love you. And so the Lord just reminded Bobby, sometimes we get busy and we're thankful And we're saying thanks, but sometimes we don't pull it down to the real personal to say, I love you, Father. I love you. And there's no way I can express it enough for all that you've done and have been to me, but I love you, Father. And so that's been really important for us and for our church to start doing that more than it was already doing. But just entering into praise and worship. You know, when we come into praise and worship, everybody comes from um, homes and uh, there can be some stress. You can be coming where maybe the kids have acted up or the kids aren't doing what you think they should be doing or whatever. Or maybe you had a disagreement with your husband in the car coming over. There can be all kinds of things. But when we come into praise and worship, we need to try to put that behind us. You know, just not spend your whole service thinking about that, but lay that at the feet of Jesus and then enter into praise and worship. Enter into the the praise part, get in there, clap, jump around a little bit if you want to. It's liberating, it's liberating. And, uh, and then just worship the Lord during the worship time and just uh, let the Lord minister to you. Close your eyes. There was one Sunday in our church. Our Sundays, our, our church is very big on praise and worship, just like you are here. And uh, our sound was so loud. Not, not the sound of the speakers. The people, I, I, there's no way I can even explain it. The sound of the people in our church had raised so high. I I told Bobby afterwards, I know the angels were singing with him. I knew the angels because there's no way that our congregation could make that noise. I closed my eyes and I listened to that. And it was just overwhelming to me of the sound of our congregation praising God. But see, we are the congregation we're the congregation. And so when we come to these services, get in. Get in. Don't be shy. Because that's what we're going to do in heaven. Is sing and dance around the throne. Praise God. Worship him. Fall at his feet. All of these things. And so practice now. Practice now. Get set free. Have a good time. Let me tell you a couple of testimonies. I'm going to have them play in just a second. Uh, one morning I woke up, and, and in the mornings when I wake up, and uh, of course I start getting ready immediately, and so I either listen to a preaching or to praise and worship. just depends when I wake up how I feel, whether I want to hear a complete sermon or if I want to just spend time praising the Lord and worshiping Him. And this morning that I woke up, this particular morning, it was just recently, and um, anyway, I woke up and this song popped up over in YouTube. And so it 
popped up and I thought, well, I love that name. So I just hit it, didn't know the, the singer or anything. And I just hit it and then it started playing. Well, man, I got so blessed. I mean, I'm putting on makeup and everything, but I'm singing along and, you know, and having the best time with this song. And I hit it again. I think I hit it like five times while I was getting dressed. I'm going to have them um, because I want to tell you some miracles that happened after I really got into this song. If you will put this song on, if we... I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I'm walking and talking with my mind stayed on Jesus. <laughs> God's so blessed. And I thought, okay, I'm not real busy this morning. I'm going to be in the house. So I'm, I'm going to take this song. I kept my phone with me all morning. That's all I did. Whether, whether I was cooking, whether I was cleaning, whatever. It was, I hit that thing probably a hundred times. And I was singing it and singing it and singing it. And I was so refreshed. I felt like I'd been on a week's vacation. By the time that that noon came and I fed my husband, I really felt so re revived. I felt so refreshed. And so all during the day that was running through my mind is my mind stayed on Jesus. When I woke up this morning, my mind was stayed on Jesus. The next morning at about three in the morning, I woke up, but I had had a horrible dream. I hardly, this is hardly... Uh, has probably hardly ever happened to me, maybe just a couple of times in my whole life. And I woke up and, and it was the most horrible dream. And my heart was pounding. I mean, just nearly out of my chest. There was such anxiety in me. And it was such a shock that I woke up and all of this. And, and what did the Lord do? In my spirit, that song came. That song came when my heart was pounding. And my, and I was in anxiety. I was having trouble breathing and I could hear the song playing. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. So I started singing it and laying there in bed. I just started singing it. I could hear the music. God was giving me the music. I could hear it. So I was singing with the music and immediately that dream left. I can't even tell you right now what that dream was about. Because it totally left me and, and peace came back. Uh, my breathing went back to normal. The palpitations of my heart calmed down. And then I just stayed in bed singing that song until I got up a little bit later. But these are spo special moments. But see, we yield. We yield ourselves to these moments. I took time when that song that was anointed to me, might not have been to you, that's okay, because everybody's different and everybody has different tastes. But when that song was anointed to me, I took the time to spend time with that song, to let it minister to me and to refresh me. And then here I had it just maybe eight or nine hours later when I was in that horrible situation, God brought back that song that I just spent all that time singing and, and loving on him and worshiping him with that song. So it's us getting ourselves in position for these things. Um, another testimony is <clears throat> I have a prayer group uh, once a week that meets in my home. And so 
Uh, we always start off with either praise or worship. I decide what we kind of, the direction we want the prayer team to go in. So sometimes it's praise and we'll sing two or three songs from uh, the phone. And, um, and then we go into prayer. And um, well, one morning I was up real early and I thought, I'm just going to go into the room where we have the prayer meeting and I'm just going to put on worship and I'm going to just sit there and just worship the Lord before everybody shows up. Anyway, so I put on worship and I was just ministering to the Lord and worshiping. Then his presence came in. I mean, it was so powerful. And, and I fell to my knees at the chair where I was. And uh, I, the song continued and I had it so it would play it more than once. And I would just, I got lost in the worship of the Father. And um, I probably went maybe 35 minutes with never looking up, never opening my eyes, just totally on the floor, lost in that worship. And when I opened my eyes, the room was full. I had never heard one of those ladies come in. And they were all on the floor. Every one of them were on the floor because when they walked in the door, they sensed the presence of God and they shut the door so gently and they came in and every one of them. And then we continued because of what was happening. And then did we have a powerful prayer meeting? <laughs> wow, did we have a powerful prayer meeting? But just allowing ourselves to take time for us to get in his presence. You know, it, we get in his presence when we're in church. And then we can get in your, his presence at home. But it's us being more hungry. It's us pressing in. And it's us um, drawing on God, drawing on the Father to come to us. And uh, so with praise and worship, it's so important for us to spend that time in worshiping God and in praising, it, praising him. I know one time I was coming back I don't know. Are you? Okay. Uh, one time I was coming back from the border and I had one of the Mexican leaders with me in the car. And when we started back, I said, well, let's put on some music and just worship the Lord and sing. And anyway, the song started talking about being grateful to God, being grateful to God. And of course it was in Spanish. So she understood it and I understood it. And so I said, well, let's just spend some time thanking the Lord. Let's spend some time. So we got the music off and then we just started thanking. Thank you, Lord, for this. Thank you, Lord, for this. And then she started saying, thank you, Lord. Well, then the presence of God came in the car. And I mean, then we were major. Thank you, Lord, for this. And thank you, Lord, for this. And, and, and the more we were thanking the Lord, I looked down, I was going 90. I was like, the more we were thanking the Lord, man, I was praying on a Mexican highway. Oh, my word. I mean, I think back over that and I thought, oh, boy, was God taking care of me for that moment. And because I was getting so excited of what I was experiencing, what he was doing, what he was showing me. And it was so awesome. And so and then we got there real quick. <laughs> she said, I don't think I've ever had a trip this fast. <laughs> I said, I don't think I have either. <laughs> I didn't tell Bobby that one for a very long time. And or he wouldn't have ever let me go to the border again <laughs> by myself. But anyway, just <clears throat> when you feel the, the urge, when you feel the drawing, you're drawing on the Lord. But then he's drawing on you like, take a little more time with me. Don't be in a hurry. I know one time I love to bake. And I love to give all of it away to our church members. Uh, I am famous for brownies. <laughs> Literally famous for brownies. I don't even eat them. And uh, because I, that's too much chocolate for me. But um, they just, they, they're always asking me for the brownies. So I, I make a lot of brownies and give them away all the time to the church members. But so one day I uh, had some free time. And so... 
um, so I decided, oh, I'll start making some cakes and brownies and different things. And then on Sunday, I'll give this. This was Saturday. And on Sunday, I'll just go ahead and, you know, I had people in mind that I wanted families that wanted to give that. And I was, I was getting ready. Nobody was in the house. I was going to have the whole afternoon all by myself. And the Lord said to me, Martha or Mary? <laughs> I said, okay, Lord, Mary, Mary. <laughs> So I went in, got my Bible, sat in a rocking chair and spent like two hours with the Lord. That was so beautiful. And he just showed me things. He, I was reading the word. He was speaking to me through the word. And when I finished and I knew that my time with him uh, was like it was, that was what he wanted was that time. And then I looked at my watch and I said, hey, I've got time still now to fix all this food. And so he gave me both. I, I put him first, and I spent all that time with him, and then he let me have the desires of my heart, which was to uh, pr prepare some desserts for some of the church families. And so it's us taking time. It's us, even when we forget it sometimes, he reminds us, he'll say, sit a little longer. Stay here a little bit longer with me. And don't pray and then jump up and run for all your daily errands that you need to do or your activities that you don't listen to him give you the answer, that you don't listen to him to give you the guidance. But just stay there in silent after you've spent your time praying and even with the word, then you, you uh, just sit, just sit there, whether you have music or no music, just sit there and just listen to the Holy Spirit. And see what he's going to say to you. See what he's going to minister to you. Okay. Um, and the last thing is in the word. Is having the presence of God always in the word. Because anytime you get into the word, even if you say, oh, I'm not getting anything right now. Ask the Holy Spirit ahead of time when you start reading the word. Uh, Holy Spirit, show me things. Show me things in the word. Show me things. That's what his uh, job is, is to reveal to you the word of God, is to show you things in the word of God. And so ask him for that. And um, one time I remember I was getting ready to read some chapters that I read all the time. And I, before I started, I said, Holy Spirit, I've read this chapter so many times. Have you got anything new to show me? You know, and it was when Jesus went into the wilderness and one of the, I was reading in two different versions and one of the versions said <clears throat> that when he went into the wilderness, that, um, that the Lord protected him from all the wild beasts. And what was the other thing? The wild beast and something else. I had never noticed that before. I had never noticed that. We think of when Jesus went into the wilderness, he was led by the Holy Spirit. He was in there. The devil came against him and everything else. But there's one scripture that said that the Lord protected him from all the wild beasts. And there was something else with that. But I had never even seen that. I had never even, even though I had read that chapter so many times, I had not picked up on that, that there was even, besides fighting the devil in the wilderness, he had a protection from God over his life, from the circumstances around him. And, and so this is what I'm saying. When we read the word of God, it is the word of God. We were in a church in Dallas and this is so many years ago. I, I, we didn't have kids at that time. It was in the very beginning of our ministry. And we were in Dallas preaching. And uh, it was a very um, ju jubilant church. And everybody danced. And, uh, and so it was exciting to be there just to see everybody in praise and worship. And so um, uh, I needed my Bible. It was under my chair. It was during praise and worship. And I picked up my Bible. I don't know if I told this or not. I picked up my Bible out of the chair, underneath the chair. It was vibrating. And I mean, I pick it up. I picked it up like this. It was vibrating. And I'm going, okay, Lord, what is this? What is this? This is kind of weird. And so, but I, I mean, literally, I looked at it. It was not moving, but it was vibrating. And I felt it. I could feel it. 
So then I thought, oh no, everybody's dancing. And so it's shaking the floor. So my Bible's shaking because it's shaking the floor. But while I'm trying to figure all this out in, the, in my mind, because it was so unusual, all of a sudden the heat started coming up out from my Bible and went up my arms. And then the Lord said, my word is spirit and life. My word is spirit and life. And he was letting me know the word is alive. When you read the word, you are reading life. God's word is power. It's life. It's anointing. When you confess it, when you confess it, you're confessing God's anointing. You're confessing the life of God. You're confessing miracles when you read it because this is power. This is not words on paper. This is God's word from heaven for his children to live an abundant life through Jesus Christ. And these words have power. So when we come into his presence of reading the word of God, then it brings his presence to us. So when you're reading the word of God, I was talking to you about when you're praying what, that you uh, don't continue praying if you felt an anointing or something, but stay with it until the Lord shows you um, that it's lifted. The same when you're reading the Word of God. If you're reading the Word of God, and you could be reading chapters, you could be reading one chapter, you could be reading five verses, whatever. And this doesn't happen every time. I'd like to say it does, but it doesn't. But you're just being faithful with your reading, studying the Word of God, getting to know what God says about who you are in Christ and who you can be in Christ. And as you're reading, then if there's an anointing that comes on a scripture, all of a sudden it's, it can jump off the page at you or what, as you read it, that you can feel an anointing, stay with it. Read it again and then read it again. And as long as that anointing is there on that, don't go off of it. Keep reading it and meditate on it. Just stop. Just sit there for a while. Go over the scripture in your mind. Meditate. God, what are you saying to me right now? What is this going to mean to me right now? And you go ahead and you read it again until that anointing leaves. The same with I was telling you about the praying. Because either God is showing you something that moment that he wants to reveal in your life. Or he's going to have you ready. So when somebody comes to you and asks for prayer, that scripture is going to be for them. He was preparing you for someone else. He, and, and then he put it in you with that anointing and with that meditation you did on that scripture that when somebody comes and it could be that it could be that day next day it could be a month later but God will by the Holy Spirit will bring it back to you and say that's what I prepared you for is to help that person and to take that scripture and then minister that to the person in his presence and we bring the presence of God with us because God is in us, the Holy Spirit is in us, Jesus is in us. So we bring his presence with us to extend to these other people. Um, I, I got to pray for this girl from China yesterday up at, at Karis. <clears throat> and uh, and um, so she was talking to us about our class. We, we've been there all week teaching in there in the class. And um, so I hugged her. And so... I noticed it, it, it kind of stiff, you know, and it's a cultural thing with China. And so I told her, I said, oh, I love China. I've been to China and we got to go into a government orphanage and they took us, hiding us out because you can't openly minister in China. And so they hid us out in a back room and they brought all the Chinese workers from this government office, I mean orphanage, and they took them to the back room where we were. And I had already bought each of them a little gift. And so they, they were real excited about that one. And then, so I told them at the end, now after I share the word of God with you, then uh, I want you to come up here. And so my plan was I was going to hug them. And so anyway, the first uh, young girl came. And so I hugged her and she... 
I felt like she thought it was a torture. <laughs> you know, so I hugged her and no emotion, no response, no nothing. So I went through the whole line of everybody. Everybody's like that. <laughs> but then <clears throat> I noticed after everybody was through, I said, now this girl, I already hugged her, I already hugged her but she come back. She would come back. But they nearly all came back a second time. So I had a different group. A, a doctor got saved. I asked if anybody wanted to receive Jesus. And a doctor of that orphanage got saved. And then none of the young girls did. But I found out later they had already prayed the sinner's prayer. So they didn't know the Lord. But it's a cultural thing about the hugging. But the next day, well, you had a different group of workers. And when they arrived, one of them asked um, the um, missionary that was speaking to them in China. Of course, they didn't know English, so everything was translated in China. She said, is that woman going to do that huggy thing? <laughs> so they, were, they all came up. <laughs> you know, so I told her, this woman yesterday from China, and then I prayed for her, and I prayed because of what she's learned here at Karis Bible College, that God's love would flow through her to all these. When she goes back, she's been here in the States, and God told her, go back and start ministering to your people. So as soon as she graduates, she's moving back to China. And, uh, but I, I prayed over her that God's love would flow through her, and I said, you're going to even hug people. And she was crying and crying. And she kept saying, hug me before you leave. Hug me before you leave. But and just God moments. God moments. And I can say that every one of you have God moments. And whether you recognize it or not, or whether you recognize it but don't meditate it on enough, because when you have a God moment, meditate on it what he just did for you, what he just did for your family, what he just did for your son or your daughter or your grandkids and meditating on those things. But then trying to get, um, no, that's not the right word, just presenting yourself available to get in these, in these places where that his presence can be so strong. I'm going to end with this one thing. More, And I know many of you know, and I'm not going to tell the story about John David, our son, who ended up in prison. But the day we heard that he had been arrested and, um, and w was already in prison, we were, we were headed up here to Karis. In fact, I was speaking for Barbara on that Thursday, and we got up here on Saturday, and he had been arrested on Friday night and was, in, was going into prison. And we couldn't talk to him. We didn't know what happened. We had no idea what was going on. And um, anyway, Barbara was kind enough, said, Lynn, if you can't do this, it's okay. And I said, no, I need to do this. And so I ministered uh, to the women at Flourish at that time with just hearing that our son was now in prison. And, uh, <clears throat> but one of the things that when my husband told me what had happened, well, <clears throat> excuse me, we didn't know what had happened yet. But when he told me that our son had been arrested and was put into prison, I stood there in shock. I mean, you know, I, I was just in shock. And there wasn't anything leading up to it. Um, it was a total shock to us. And, but what came out of me by the Spirit, by the Spirit of God, I looked at my husband and he just told me that shocking news. And I said, Bobby, I don't care what's happened. I don't care whether he's guilty or not guilty, but we are going to stand with him through this battle and he is going to be protected and we, he is going to come out victorious and, he, and, and he's going to come out as a winner in this situation. And I said that by the spirit of God. I didn't cry. I didn't fall apart. None of that. I just said that by the Spirit of God. And I stood on that confession for two and a half years. 
For two and a half years, I stood on that confession. Halfway through that two and a half years, one night, a spirit of fear came in my bedroom, in Bobby Sinar's bedroom. He was asleep. A spirit of fear came like, I felt like the devil was in there himself telling me our son was going to get killed in prison. That all, I mean, everything was unloaded on me from hell. And I was crying out to God. I was saying, God, give me a word. Give me a word. I mean, the presence of the enemy was in that bedroom so strong. And you know what God said to me? He said, go back to what you confessed. Go back. That's my word to you. What the Spirit of God said in the beginning. Go back. And that's all he said. So I immediately, I didn't wake my husband up because I felt like this was something I had to deal with that I didn't even need for him to carry this. And so I went back in that moment and I remembered, of course, every single thing I said, which was the word of God. I wasn't necessarily quoting, you know, this verse, this verse, this, but everything I said was the word of God. And I started saying that over John David's protected no harm will come to him and he will come out and he will be victorious. Every single thing I said in the van and every time I confessed another thing, uh, it lifted. It started lifting. It started lifting. And within 10 minutes after just praying and confessing the word of God, it had left. It had totally left. And, and that was only one time in two and a half years that I faced fear over this situation. Now, I want to add one more thing to that. So I encourage you, when the battle comes, and it's even a surprise battle, stand on the word and give the word first. Don't, I'm sorry, don't fall apart and cry. Put on your battle clothes. Get on your battle clothes. Start confessing. Start declaring. Start confessing everything that the Lord says about this situation, and then stand firm. Stand firm. Uh, about a year and a half ago, and I don't think I've told this one at all. I was walking out of my bedroom at my house, and the Holy Spirit said to me, Lynn, do you know why you have not had uh, any anger, any bitterness, any unforgiveness towards your son for what happened? And I, I, was, I, I stopped. I stopped dead in my tracks, and I said, and I knew I didn't have any of those things. I had, nothing, I had to deal with nothing on any of that level, no matter what our family went through because of it. And uh, so I just stopped and I said, no, Lord, I, I don't know. And he said to me, because when you declared my word from the beginning, he said, my mercy that was extended to John David came through you and it became your mercy towards John David. So I never had to forgive him. I was never angry with him. I never held bitterness against him for anything that our family went through, the ministry went through or any of that because God's mercy flowed through me towards John David and it became my mercy towards John David. When we're in the presence of God, no matter what we're going through, he is there to help us. He is there to help us walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And then he makes you victorious. He makes you victorious. I want you to bow your head. Father, I thank you for this word that you've given me today for each one of these women. And Father, we know everybody goes through different things. They're facing different trials. It could be in the area of finances. It could be in the area of health. It could be in the area of families. It could be in so many different areas. But your word tells us you never leave us or forsake us. And you're with us all the time. And that, Father, that as we enter into your presence through prayer, through praise and worship, through the word of God, and even just staying close to you, Father, and in these special moments that you have for us, Father, I just thank you that you are today touching them where they are right now, that you're just letting them know that you love them so much, so much. 
And you can, you'll give them a hug. You'll give them a hug. Thank you, Father, for this time. And uh, uh, I know Barbara will have everybody ministered at the table for new people here. But Father, we just thank you for blessing them, for answering their prayers. And Father, for them being uh, awesome members of this church, helping the pastors to win the loss for Jesus and for this church to grow and be a lighthouse in this community. And we thank you for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Wasn't that a blessing? That was awesome. I'm just, again, so glad all of you could come. And um, we do want to remind you, Chrissy mentioned it, next week Flourish is, is dismissed for spring break. But before you go, as um, Lynn um, mentioned, if you have prayer requests at your table, please take time to pray for one another. And then also Lynn does have a table over here. There's a gift for every one of you to go pick up. And um, then also she has a few books left there, and uh, she said if you want one, you can have one. But again, we want to make sure you go over there and get your gift from Lynn. So does everyone want to give her a hand clap for bringing us all a present? Okay, and so the gift is a little notepad, and she said her daughter-in-law made those. And so they're really, really special, so we want to make sure you pick that up. But we just love... Oh, and then also in this bag is a, a keychain, and a man from their church made the keychain. So, again, please make sure you get your gift before you go. Talk to one another, pray for one another, and we will see you Sunday. Amen? Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.